Okay, we promise not to make this too terribly long. Look how... <laughs> I feel like I'm in a low rider. You, I... Okay. <laughs> I broke the chair. We're going, I could do like this. We're gonna make this quick and just give you practical things. This is kind of like part two of the podcast, okay? All right, so let's start with, I think the number one question that people have, or question they're considering at the beginning of the year is, I want a devotion or how do I get in the word every single day? Can we just start with when we wake up in the morning, what that looks like? Like if you want that discipline, or uh -huh. is that coming in the middle? Well, no, and I think that's great. I think that, I think that it can be whatever you want it to be. Anytime. It, it doesn't can, have to be. Yes, good. because there are definitely times, weeks, seasons where I'm doing it first thing in the morning. And then there's times, weeks, seasons where I'm doing it at the end of the day. So whatever works for you at, at any point in time. But some of you all may be like, I do it every single day, every single morning. That's fine. That's great. You do whatever works for you. you said okay. So that's a great question. And what am I going to do first thing in the morning? If you like a devotion book, this is my go-to recommendation all the time. It is New Morning Mercies, Paul David Tripp. It is, um, it is, it looks like this on the inside. So it's, it's daily and it's got some rich content and then it gives you additional scripture reading. So I love New Morning Mercies if you are looking for a devotion. A new one that I found this past year, Jackie Hill Perry, Upon Waking. I love the cover. Isn't it so pretty? Mm -hmm. It's a 60 day devotion. And if you are not familiar, or if you are familiar with Jackie, um, she said in here very honestly that she does not like devotion. <laughs> she did not want to write a devotion book because she said, um, you know, it, it's all these pretty little yeah. pleasantries. It's overwhelming. And, Could you imagine? Mm -hmm. So, Like the, I've got to write something lovely and encouraging for how many days? There's no fluff in here. The, the thing I like about this devotion, it's short and it is powerful. And she just cuts right to it. If you're one of those no-nonsense people that just wants to, to go hard and deep and jump right in there, yeah. It's good. It's it's unlike anything I've read, but it's I love it. And I think something that Angela and I are both super consistent on is um, on your phone, if you do not have the Bible app, download the Bible app, and um, it gives you a verse of the day, mm -hmm. and then it gives you a video to go with the verse of the day that just kind of explains it a little bit more. And then my favorite part is the third part that it walks you through even a little bit more deeply and adds additional scripture. And so um, I love, love that. And that's what I use to do my journaling for the day. Um, and what that looks like for me, and again, I'm not gonna belabor this, but I think that if you want, if you're interested in more information, just send us a direct message on social media what or text us if you've got our number and I'm happy to to explain more but we call this the friend and it started years ago years and years ago um, I'm, I will save you that backstory but um, a person a Bible teacher that really really transformed my life through her Bible studies um, did a live video once on her prayer journal and how she takes the word of God and prays it over people in situations. And I was like, that's so fascinating to me. Like, I've never known that. Why would we not take mm -hmm. God's word plus all the needs and the requests and like put them together? It's like two sticks of dynamite and like, wow, what could even be happening in the spiritual realm when we're that intentional, that thoughtful. So I just happened to say to another person, um, who knows this person, like, do you have any idea how that prayer journal works? Because she didn't show the inside of it. Long story short, I was able to get the inside of it, a template, and I've made my own and did this years and years ago. I have no idea, at least 10, because I've got that many prayer journals left. But real quick, um, I'm going to show you a blank page because I don't want to show you a full page because you might see things in there. <laughs> I don't know. Okay, so you can see, this is what it looks like. You can see there's a date, the scripture reading for the day, and then this is where, these are the requests. This is what's going on um, down here, and this is what I write in there, okay? So it's family, it's extended family, friends, sick, grieving, church, missions, whatever. Okay, so I'll just 
I'll just tell you that, well, I'll, I'll do today's because I think today's was pretty kind of harmless. Okay, so I wrote the date and the verse of the day out of the Bible app is what I'm using to fill in all of these blanks, okay? So um, I wrote that down. And then up here, my personal interaction is the verse of the day was just simply t reminding us and telling us that God rules over all things, okay? He is the authority over all things. So I wrote down, the first thing I wrote down, he has power and authority over everything. Nothing is too hard for him. And then I started like considering the things that I think are hard and I need to put those before the Lord and say, I am so glad, Lord, that you have the authority and the power over these things that make me nervous or I'm overwhelmed by or I'm afraid of. And just reminding myself that he is the one. He holds all of this in his hand. And so I take that same concept, those same thoughts, and I fill in those blanks down here. And and so Angela is always listed here, depending on what's going on in her life and her family. I know how to take that verse and apply it to a certain situation. So I will say to the Lord and just quickly jot down, Lord, you know what Angela's desire is for this particular thing. Would you just remind her today that you are sovereign, that you're in control, that you are over all of this? Do not let her be afraid, blah, 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 blah. What so, a gift to have a friend that writes down and intentionally prays. Thank you, friend. Well, because it matters. We, it matters and we want to grow in mm -hmm. our stewardship of prayer. And not just say, I'm praying for you and then never think about it. Yes. Or will you pray for me? Sure. And then never think about and it. And never think about it. But what the beauty of this is, as I wrap this prayer journal up, is that um, you, I look, I spend like the 31st, the first of the year, I'll, I'll go back and read my prayer journal because it's just a, it's a story of my life over the year. And it's, and God's faithful. Oh, it's fascinating to see what he's answered that I've forgotten about or what we're still praying through. Or what you thought you wanted and you didn't. That's right. So <laughs> that's my prayer. <laughs> this was a big, big thing for me. And, um, it can look a lot of ways. If this is like, eh you know what, then just do this. Just do this. Just get a blank page thing because in the podcast, I talked about the three things that I, um, you know, was considering the growth, the something new that I haven't seen yet. I want to have my eyes open to it. Or number three, just finally do the thing that you've been talking about for a long time. Just do this. But the point is being disciplined in scripture and your journal. And you do something. I have an option three. Yes. <laughs> There's always options, y'all. There's, there's so many options. This is called a prayerful planner. Look at how pretty it Where'd is. Where'd you get that from? Did you order it? I ordered it online. It come, You can get stickers and things. There's a little... I'm not a sticker, mm -hmm. creative, journaling person. I want to be. More power to y'all <laughs> that are. Um, and there's a lot of things in here that I don't even fully utilize. There's, there's room for prayer requests. There's a place for the word of the year. And the verse of the year. And why you chose that word. So you can look back on that later. There's things like purpose worksheets and goals and all kinds of categories, spiritual, health, home, hobbies, goals for the year. Um, but what I like, this is what I use the most. Each month, there's a way to just kind of outline, hey, here's what I want out of the month. There's a way to make sure you're drinking enough water <sighs> or creating a habit. I don't track all that on here, but you could. Well, because it's a zero. You can. <laughs> You can choose a verse of the month, the prayer for the month, what you're grateful for, what you're praying for. There is a calendar feature. I get stressed trying to plan my life too far. I use my Apple calendar mostly, but there is a calendar where I just kind of map out what's going on in my family. But my everyday looks like this. My everyday has um, something you're thankful for, how your physical health is doing. And then this is where I write the verse of the day, like Fran was talking about in the Bible app. And then... This is the box where I put the people I'm praying for, and then this is where I write my takeaways. And I do, similar to Fran, I do the verse of the day, the video, the little prayer prompts are fabulous in the Bible app. And then generally, if I have enough time, I will pick up this devotion book. It's short. And then I go um, into the Bible app reading plan for the Bible recap. If you're doing the Bible recap, Atlas put tape on my book when we were wrapping presents. <laughs> he tried to wrap my book. Um, but the Bible recap has a podcast. They also have just a summary 
it sometimes I'll listen to it and read along because it just helps me like cement it into my brain. She covered the book of Revelation in I think four days. It was a lot. But sometimes I'm in the Bible recap, sometimes I'm not. If I miss a day, I just jump back in wherever it is. Do not get legalistic. Don't stop a reading plan just because you missed a few days. You're reading your Bible, whatever that looks like. Mm -hmm. Just do something. Anything. Again, if part of your desire is to grow spiritually, you mm -hmm. know where you are right now and you know what you need to do next. Some people just need to start with um, the Bible app of the day, the, verse, the verse of the day. one verse. That's my favorite. I mm -hmm. promise you it's my go-to. I'm going to do it every single day, and I'm going to take my prayer journal and then elaborate off of that. But you get to decide. Mm -hmm. You, We do a variety of things. There's and, no right or wrong. No, and we you could don't have come to be back. Like us. We could have this conversation in July and be like, I ain't doing nothing. I don't you know, so yeah. it's just you get to decide and and it's yours to choose. Okay, one more thing, and then I think Angela's got one more thing. One thing I'm 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 gonna build back into my disciplines this year is scripture memory. I need it in my brain, I need it more cemented. Y'all know all of our brains are very um just scattered and, and the inability to focus now is at an all time high because we're just we can't do it. We can't just rest. Our br we just feel like we've got to be on our phone all the time or whatever. So this is more of just like my brain needs this, but I also know like my life needs this. Um, so it's scripture memory. Um, I'm glad you're doing this so it will rub off on me. Well, I need it too. So what I do is the first and the 15th, I pick a new verse. I have a feeling I'm going to go ahead and say that starting off, I'm going to give myself lots of grace. And probably for the first couple of months, just memorize this one scripture a month. Because on top of everything else, I just don't want to become legalistic and feel like, huh, I can't do this. I'm failing. Um, so anyway, I just have always put it on a spiral doohickey thing, you know. 99 cents. 99 cents. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It just works and it's all contained for me. Fits in your purse. Fits in your purse. And if you go on a walk, take this with you and just flip through it. So if you want to memorize an entire book, or not a book, a call, that'd be great. <laughs> a chapter, Start like a, Jude. a small chapter, <laughs> then it, this would be a great thing. But if you're gonna be kind of more all over the place, which is what I tend to do, because I tend to pick a verse that is meaningful to me in that moment, and I want to like get it. Not just memorize it, but kind of live in it for a little bit. So. Um, I'm going to bring this back in 2024. I'll let you know in June or July how this is going. But I love that you do that. It's such a good habit that you have modeled for me, and I've not been good about that discipline, but I want to be. Well, and again, you get to decide. You, you're you choosing how you mm -hmm. want to grow mm -hmm. in all those ways that you listed on the podcast. So everybody gets to choose. We're just giving you suggestions and ideas of what works for us in the past, um, we wouldn't tell you something that we haven't done ourselves for any length of time because that would not be right. Okay, what is... <laughs> Our Monk Fool book is back for me in 2024. I have quoted this book so often. I have read it. I've talked about it. It's, it's Praying Like Monks, Living Like Fools, An Invitation to the Wonder and Mystery of Prayer. And this is Tyler not... Statton. It's not a big book, y'all. No. This and is... If you want to grow in your reading... That this will, if, if you are one of those people like me that says, I just wish I could pray better or knew how to pray. I will also say, I've never prayed for anybody and they were like, that was a horrible prayer. I, I wish you had not done that. For real. So just pray for people, for yourself. Talk to God. It's just a conversation. But this is such a great book for growing if you want to just know more about prayer. And it, it gave me freedom of, you know, it's not something I have to accomplish or do well or write. right. It made me excited about the opportunity I have to have these conversations with the Lord. Love, 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 love it. Okay. I highly recommend. All right. Y'all are awesome. Thanks for part two. What did I call this? Like a bonus a episode. Bonus. We need confetti. Woohoo! Happy New Year. Happy New Year, everybody. Maybe we'll do this again and just yeah. kind of elaborate on some things because I think something I would love for us to elaborate on and even um, we could do this in the next recording is just letting people see I think prayer is so scary for people mm -hmm. 
I, I hear it all the time from college students that they're not given an opportunity to learn how to pray or what that sounds like. It's very scary. Um, I don't know if it'd be weird, but I don't think there's anything wrong. Like I think in another video, we could elaborate on prayer and even model mm -hmm. like how to pray scripture, how to pray scripture and let me pray over Angela. Angela prays mm -hmm. over me. Like you get to hear that because I think it's just not done enough. Yeah. Okay. Take, take the fear out of it. Mm -hmm. Take the fear out of it. Okay. Happy New Year, everybody. We love you. See you later.